Okay, gents, it's uh, Wednesday evening, November 16th, 2016, and this is uh, our update for the day. Uh, today we're going to do our normal um, status of our open positions. We'll check out the uh, uh, how the new trades are faring out, some of the adjustments I've made. Uh, look at unusual conditions. This is really rare what we're seeing right now, guys. Just really, really rare. rare. So uh, let's get started. Alright, first thing we're going to look at is uh, my weekly crude strangle. Um, you know guys, going into last night, this is what it looked like right here. It was a beautiful, beautiful position. I, After I closed with you guys, did my uh, brief, made the recording, I tried to go in and add butterflies to both break-evens. Uh, man, that would have been a beautiful position. I couldn't get them on. Uh, there was enough liquidity, but um, I just couldn't ever get the trades on. So I went into the market this morning, uh, postured like this, and of course we had a down move this morning that took it right down below the break even on this, uh, on this trade. Um, so I had to do some adjusting. And of course, you know, the, the crude market, I had it adjusted for this, uh, uh, for this down move. And then, lo and behold, we get the shoot straight back up over 46 to 4640 today. Uh, just a huge, another huge move, ripped out of nowhere, just in you know a short period of time. The market just rips your face off to the upside. Um, this is not how my position looked at that time of the day. It was really, really bad. So, um, so then um, we went back in and uh, kind of let the market settle down a little bit. It went my come back in my way and uh, you know we ended up closing it out for a three hundred and ninety dollar loss for the week including commit uh, not, not including commission so it's like four hundred and some change for a, a loss for the week this is the first weekly strangle I've lost on um, this was just a very very big move in the crude market this week in a short period of time um, we had the move off of 42, went straight to 46 in less than a day and a half. Um, so it went right up to any, it went right to your, it knows where your short strikes are, it knows where your hedges are. The markets always do, guys. You guys know how that works. Um, but all in all, it was a good trade. Uh, we came out with a loss, but no big deal. You know, we we're able to, able to trade through it and salvage a huge loss. Um, but I gotta tell you, if I'd have had those, been able to get those butterflies, this would have been a home run today. I mean, it would have been a veritable home run for the week. And I'm just hating myself for not uh, being able to get those things on uh, last night. But anyway, that's the way the ball rolls in trading market, trading the markets. So uh, sometimes uh, market just whips you. All right, here's my S&P strangle for the week. Uh, steady as she goes. I'm trying to take it off right now. I'm up $1,335. Um, I've been in the trade since Monday. You know, we're so close to, to the max profit on this. And this is more than I usually collect, you know, in a week anyway on these, uh, on these things. So I'm trying to cash out and reposition tomorrow, maybe Friday with another trade. So I've got my order in the queue. You know, hopefully, unless we get a big move tonight, this thing will come off and uh, and we'll reload. But this has just been a really nice trade, another nice S&P 500 trade. All right, this is the crude position, crude strangle I had on, have that uh, placed on October 21st. We put it on with 55 days to go. We currently have 29. This is the current price. I'm still down in this trade, 3,500 um, bucks. I got to tell you, this is uh, this is one of the few days where I've I've had profitable days. I haven't had a profitable open position since I put this trade on, but I've had a couple of profitable days. Uh, this was one of them. Not a big day, but at least it's good to see some green every now and then. And price couldn't be more perfect in this thing, so. Uh, we've got uh, got a good range. We'll just see what crude hands us. You know, it's this market just goes all over the place, and we're in a period right now. If you put your strangle on about the same time I did, you've been battling a lot of things. The election uh, increased. Uh, the guys have been pumping volatility in. 
a uh, little seeped out today, but you know they got the OPEC me OPEC meeting coming up, so we're battling some premium and IV issues that uh, it's normally not there in this market. But anyway, just if you're trading there with me, just just drive right on. I have no doubt this trade's going to work out great for us. All right, here's the retirement account, Broken Wing Butterfly, just to show you how this thing is progressing. Uh, we've got 37 days to go. We're up 605, and I'm really looking at putting a uh, debit spread on. But I got to tell you, what's holding me off from doing that is it's in the charts that I'm going to show you at the end of this. Um, I'm I'm as bullish as anybody. Let me clarify that going into the election I was as bullish going into the end of the year as anybody um, yeah I I think you guys knew what my position was going into the end of the year but that was before we went straight up 160 points in the S&P's that was before we went up over 200 points in the Russell straight up which is close to a 20% move without a downtick in the Russell. Um, you know, those are yearly moves that were made inside of a couple of days. The Russell's been up nine straight days in a row. I'm going to talk about that in just uh, at, at the end of this. So uh, I would have already placed this debit spread to adjust this. And what the debit spread does, guys, it raises this leg up, gives us more profit. On the flat side here it'll cut down your overall profit but we're not trying to get max profit on this that's a fallacy you know we're trying to get 25 percent 25 to 50 percent of that meat right there if we can and that's a good trade for us on a broken wing butterfly dude if we can take uh, 25 percent out of these things every month um yeah we can mint money so so that's our that's our plan for this right here. You know, initially I thought I was going to sell call spreads against it, but it's just a lot better to adjust these things with that the money butterflies, and then add debit spreads to it. Cost efficient, doesn't increase your buying power, and then accounts like a retirement account is the perfect way to run these things. So anyway, that's where we stand on this trade. Here's the uh, iron condor. in the retirement account we got 23 days to go with it I'm not as worried today as I was yesterday in this trade simply because of the stuff I'm looking at in the markets right now so um, yeah, who knows this trade might uh, might turn out pretty good for us so anyway we've got uh, 23 days to go we're down 539 in it uh, no big deals I, I like the position better if we get a little soft market tomorrow this this will uh, it'll be perfect for us. So uh, anyway, nothing to do here, but just watch. Here's our um, double it up strategy for we're trading the iron condor in the crude market. We're down 856 again. Haven't haven't had an um, haven't been profitable in this uh, trade. You know, since I placed it as well, you know, this is the mirror image of what I'm doing in my personal account. It's just an iron condor here versus a strangle in the personal account. So anyway, still nothing to do. We're in good shape in this thing, guys. Uh, this has the potential for a home run too. Uh, you know, we haven't uh, we haven't run the register in let's see, we've been 21 days. This is probably the longest spell I've gone without ringing the register. So, but we're in a really good position. Um, yeah, I'm just thankful for that. So, same way as my personal account. So we're in good good shape in both of those to, to really really do nicely. Now we just need crude to participate. All right, guys, I'm going to show you something right here that I've been looking at. Look at this. This is Bank of America. I mean, you think the the, the small stocks have, have rallied up. Look at Bank of America. This is not just Bank of America. 
It's all of the banks. Do you guys remember over a year ago when I told you we wanted to play the bank stocks? Um, I ne we never did. I I never uh, I never did, and I never stressed it enough to you guys to to strike out on your own if uh, if you wanted to go this route. But this is what I'm talking about. Whenever the bonds collapse, whenever they f uh, must, they're taking my S and P off, S and P uh, strangle off. This is what I'm talking about when that bond market collapses and they finally figure out that there's higher interest rates for the next 30 years. The bank stocks are going to go on a tear. Okay, we talked about it, it's probably 18 months ago, uh, that this day was coming. Well, we're here, guys. This is it. This is what it looks like when things unwind that the... Uh, you know, central bankers have engineered and kept things pressed down the way they have. There's a huge, huge explosion about you know th that has to take place because the central bankers and the Feds have artificially been keeping this stuff just so tightly controlled that eventually it's got to explode. It's the way all freely traded markets are. You know, the government and their minions can only control free markets for so long. You know, it's it may be years, but they can't do it forever. It's just not built that way. And you see explosions like this um, evident. I mean, it's just evidence that uh, you know the manipulative efforts have uh, were present in the market. I mean, they were overt, then kind of clandestine, uh, probably covert for a while. Um, it's probably all kinds of shenanigans being played, but. Hey, it comes out in the market eventually, just like I keep telling you, the big mania run-up is going to happen. And this is going to look like this right here, uh, whenever, uh, whenever these, uh, these markets come unwound. Here's what I want you to look at. All the bank stocks are the KBE, the banking index. You know, they all look the same, guys. I mean, it's just, let's see what BBT looks like. Yeah, BB&T. These are old Stallworth banks right here. Wells Fargo. I mean, look at Wells. I mean, geez. <laughs> Holy cow. It's just unbelievable. So, uh, yep, bank stocks are on a tear, guys. Uh, let's take a look at. Guys, look at the Russell here. Up nine straight days. This is the largest nine-day up move that the Russell has ever seen. By a factor of two. Not just edging it out. By a factor of two, this is the largest nine-day up move that's ever been witnessed in the Russell. Um, I don't know what's going on in the market. I know that we've talked about for, for years now that we were going to see a mania phase, a blow-off phase. I don't know if the bell's ringing, that it's uh, bringing this in, that we're going to have a little flush out, and you know maybe this market just tears into next year and uh, and beyond. Um, but if it, if and when it does, the signs will be very, very prominent that will indicate to us that uh, the end is near. I don't mean the end of life. I'm talking about just the end of the stock market. Yeah, the lights lights have got to go out on this stock market, guys, at some point in time. Um, and the only thing that could change that, in my mind, I believe the only thing that could change this is if um, you know the new presidency and the new regime get in there and change the fundamentals, restructure everything that's just cracking at the seams. You know, if they do that, we might get some more legs in this bull market here. Um, they could completely turn everything around, but if nothing changes with our political landscape as it relates to the structure of the economy, then we're in for a mania and a complete burst. So uh, anyway, just keep that uh, keep that in mind. This is just incredible market right here. Now, what's what's an really unusual about the banking index 
I don't have um, I don't have the other chart that this is referenced to. Um, I could probably find it in that fundamental chart that we've we have access to in in Toss here. But uh, Sentiment Trader showed that. <coughs> excuse me. Every time the financials rip like this, as long as the um, the general financial conditions are trending higher then they the two go together and that's that's typically a very bullish sign just means everything's intact right now the divergence is so wide between the general financial conditions they're able to track that which is you know the expansion of interest rates the uh, you know the treasury bonds the, the the loans the default rates they actually track all that stuff so uh, what they what they do is they measure the general financial conditions against the banking index and it is as wide as it has ever been and I'm looking at a chart right now every time that it gets close to uh, as wide as we see the markets typically uh, uncoil very rapidly so you know we could be uh, could be setting up and I'm just this is just a scenario I want to stress that this is a scenario that we need to be ready for in December because there's some things happening right now that uh, that could set us up for a very nice play and that play is December 14th when the Fed comes out and makes their announcement if they make the announcement and everything is uh, um, you know they decide not to raise rates I really don't know what the markets would do I, I have no idea um, if they raise rates my bet would be that we'd get, we'd get a, a dip somewhere shortly thereafter um, again that dip would probably be another buying opportunity so that's something we need to be on the lookout for nothing has changed as far as I'm concerned I'm still bullish into next year um, but it would be really be nice to see a nice little pitch uh, to the downside here and you know if that coincides with a rise in interest rates you know the markets the economy is not going to fall apart if the Fed raises here guys it'll cause a short-term shock but that should be about it guys I think that's it for the night I just wanted to show you a couple of things here and uh, yeah, that's a, that's a wrap, so we're going to call it right here, and this is BA signing out.